Glow. This is book one for July. Police and the Black Man. <coughs> um, we're reading from an essay about black boys because I think it's important. We need to protect our children. Um, some of our adults may be too far gone, but there may be time to save some, all of our children, or at least an overwhelming majority of them, and that's what we want. So let's get into it. Notwithstanding his own acknowledgement that dem demography is not fate and criminology is not pure science, Delulio managed to s sensationalize his theory with such reckless abandon that even his academic peers worried that he had become a patsy for conservative politicians. Even worse, the super predator myth was racialized in explicit and unapologetic ways as evident from Delulio's now famous 1996 City Journal headline that boldly proclaimed, My Black Crime Problem and Ours. Delulio predicted that not only is the number of young black criminals likely to surge, but as many as half of these juvenile super predators could be young black males. Describing the black children who inspire fear among white Americans is not merely unrecognizable, but alien. Delulio appeared to sympathize with them when he said, not that we can't understand where they come from. Think about how many inner city black children are without parents, relatives, neighbors, teachers, coaches, or clergymen to teach them right from wrong. Give them loving and consistent discipline. Show them the moral and material value of hard work and study and bring them to cherish the self-respect that comes only from respect for the life, liberty, and property of others. Think how many black children grow up where parents neglect and abuse them, where other adults and teenagers harass and harm them, where drug dealers exploit them. Not surprisingly, in return for the favor of some of these children kill, rape, maim, and still without remorse. Delulio dubbed his argument the theory of moral poverty, the poverty of being without love, capable, responsible adults, or loving, capable, responsible adults, who teach you right from wrong, the poverty of growing up in the absence of people who teach morality through their own example and insist that you follow suit. In an effort to justify white fears and denounce claims of racism in the criminal and juvenile justice systems as unreasonable paranoia by blacks, Delulio argued if blacks are over, overrepresented in the ranks of the imprisoned, it is because they are overrepresented in the criminal ranks and the violent criminal ranks at that, especially in urban America. White fears of black crime, like black fears of black crime, are rational far more than reactionary or racist. It took a religious conversion on Palm Sunday in 1996 for Delulio to abandon his theory. By then it was too late, as even Delulio himself admits, once the myth was out there, there was no reeling it in. The damage has been unyielding, notwithstanding statistical evidence that the 2001 that by 2001 had firmly disproven the pre predictions of an imminent juvenile super predator. Children as young as 13 and 14 are still being tried as adults and children of juveniles have been sent to prison for life without the possibility of parole. In the wake of horrific legislation designed to stave off the impending black threat, more troubling is the lingering and pervasive influence of the super predator myth on the psyche of the police and the public. Although it is impossible to trace any one event to the image police have of black youth, it is hard to believe that Delulio's rhetoric did not emblazon the image of violent black boys running amok on the minds of those who police our streets. Think about Tamir Rice the 12 year old Cleveland boy who was killed by police on November 22nd, 2014. Why do police keep talking about Tamir's size? The shooting unfolded shortly after a witness from a nearby recreation center 
called 911 reporting a guy with a pistol that was probably fake. Since the shooting, police have been em emphatic that Tamir looked much older than 12, weighing 170 pounds, standing 5 feet 7 inches tall and wearing size 36 pants and a man's extra large jacket. Apparently, the baby face we saw in the photos after Tamir's death did little to alert officers to Tamir's true age. We'll leave it there and we'll pick up in the next video. But um, here you see um, dealing with black children and again, it, it, it seems to be an issue. Let me mark my place. It seems to be an issue. And we need to protect them as much as we can. This is why I create this space. This is why I also created a university for us. And um, these learning things for us, I publish for us and even a political cartoon for us. I, I create this space so that we can think better and then we can learn better and we can replace some of these old institutions that are harmful to our boys inside and out. I thank you for your support and until next time, take care of your mind, take care of your body and um, be safe.